Assalamu alaikum everyone. So in today's video, I will discuss the most important document that you have ever need while applying for any scholarship, any internship, or any placement in your home country or some foreign universities as well. So this is basically the document that decide whether or not you are a successful applicant for that particular scholarship. So without further delay, I am actually talking about the Statement of Purpose or SOP. So in today's video, I will discuss in detail what kind of thing you need to write and what kind of thing you need to avoid while writing your SOP. And in the last part of this video, I will discuss how you can write your own SOP with one live example. So let's start. So in a very first, I will, I will discuss what it is. So the statement of purpose, or we generally call it is as personal statement. So it is a kind of the critical piece of graduate school information that tells admission committee or graduate school about who you are. The second one is first your academic and professional interest. And the third one is how would you add value to the graduate program while applying to this? So in short, I must say, so your statement of purpose is where you tell your story about who you are and why you deserve to be a part of this particular university or institute. Okay, so in the next part, I will discuss what kind of thing you must need to consider or you must need to write while writing your SOP. So the first thing is keep your writing clear and to the point. So this is a very first point you should need to consider. You don't need to add any kind of words that looks ambiguous. Please write clear and to the point. And the second one is, it is very necessary to explain your motivation that why you are applying to that program. What is the motivation behind them? Have you ever experienced these kind of things before in your life? why you are applying to this scholarship or internship. So this is the most important point of explaining your motivation behind that particular program. So the third one is, uh, you don't need to write all the experiences that you have in your life. So only highlight or only write those experiences that are relevant to that particular program. So like, for example, your your background is biology. And you are also applying to the program that has some kind of majors in biology. So you don't need to uh, tell your experiences that are irrelevant to biology, like you are telling about your extracurricular activities that are really don't need to highlight, right? And the fourth one is address your goal. What you want to do at that particular institute. This is quite important. You need to tell what kind of thing you want to do if you get position in that institute. Fifth one is, so before applying to any scholarship, any internship, you must have an idea about that institute. What kind of faculties are there? So how many, are, how many professors are there and what kind of projects they are running in their lab? So you must know what kind of institute it is while you are applying to that. And the sixth one is, so for example, if you are applying not only one institute, you are applying four or five institutes. So according to each institute, you can modulate or you can change your SOP with, with each time you are writing. So it means that, for example, if you are applying in, in Japan, in some institute, so you have to highlight some experiences that are relating uh, to that particular field. Uh, but if you are applying to other country or other institute and the things there are different from your previous experience, then you can change your statement of purpose according to that. And I will and I will show you uh, in the last part of the video how you can write your SOB according to a one particular institute. And the second part is uh, you should need to follow the guideline that are provided by a particular institute. And uh, for example, if some institute said that your SOP should contain 300 letters or 300 or 3000 um, words, so you need to follow the guideline. 
and if they say that your SOP should be one page, you can't write the SOP more than one page. That that should not be fit with that institute. So you always follow the guideline which is provided by the institute. And the eighth one is, which is, do not exaggerate your SOP. Your SOP should be look like that you are telling some kind of story. So you take a star, then you take a middle, and then you end up end up with something. So this is a kind of the story that you are going to tell to the graduate school or the admission committee. So your SOP should look like a story, and it and it doesn't like that you you wrote something that is irrelevant with the next one, and then you write something that is totally irrelevant with the previous paragraph. So you can't write the SOP in that format. Your SOP should be, each and every part should be connected to each other that they seems or they look like a one story, right? So these are the thing, these are the eight thing I just narrow down. Uh, what I follow while writing my SOP, I just narrow down the eight things that you need to follow while writing your statement of purpose. Okay. So the second part is what kind of thing you should avoid while writing your statement of purpose. So the first thing is procrastinate. Like for example, you are thinking, ah, oh, the application deadline is 15 of November. The application deadline is 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 in the last of October. So I didn't. I don't need to write my SOP from now. I can I can write it later on. So please do not procrastinate do not and start writing your sop now so that you have a time to add it to draft and to to do something with your statement of purpose while passing each day so if you just left your sop at the very last day then it should be trouble for you because you can't write your sop at once the second thing is if you write only your grades only about like for example if your cgpa is the highest in a class then you just while writing your SOP, you just focus that I have got 3.98, 3.97 CGPA in my overall class. And you just forgot about other stuff you have done. Or, or for example, if you don't do, uh, like you have done some internship or some scholar, uh, some kind of workshop. So, but you didn't tell about that and you only focus on your grade, then it will decrease your chance of selection. The third one is exaggeration. So please keep your SOP as simple as you can. Don't exaggerate your SOP. The fourth one is do not use informal language that we are generally used while chatting with our friends or with our family. So keep your SOP in a kind of business language. Do not use informal language. And the discussion of your failure. So like, for example, you apply to some scholarship, but you didn't select. And for the next time, you're applying to other institute. And while applying to that institute, you do not need to discuss that you apply to that institute and you fail. You don't need to discuss. The sixth one is be generic. Keep your SOP as general as you can. But you can be, but you can be specific at some point. But you can't be more specified uh, about kind of institute or the, the program. And do not put the irrelevant details in your SOP. So these are the things that I wrote down that you don't need to write or you do, do not need to follow this thing by writing your SOP. This will decrease your chance of selection to any scholarship. And now I will tell you how you can write your own statement of purpose or your personal statement. So I divided this in, in four parts. Hope this will help you for all of you people. So I wrote the first part is, so the first part of your SOP should contain your introduction, your brief introduction. So in, in your brief introduction, you can tell about yourself, who you are, from which you, you belong. And the second one is your motivation in that program, right? And the second part of the SOP, it should be your academic background. And your academic background, in your academic background, you can discuss 
about your current and your previous degree. You can also tell in uh, in the academic background section about your accomplishment, uh, about your accomplishment, what you have achieved so far. So this is uh, the second part of the SOP is the most important part of your statement of purpose. If you write it correctly, then you will definitely be selected. The third part you can um, you can tell about your research interests, what kind of interest you have while while your study, while your current degree or your previous. And in, in the accomplishment part, you can tell about your courses that you have ever done, your skills if you have, uh, any kind of workshop that you attend. And these are all courses, skills, and workshop. It should be relevant to the program that you are applying. Do not put the irrelevant courses, irrelevant workshop, right? And the third part of statement of purpose is your institution information. So for example, if you are applying, if you are applying to some country to a particular institute, you should know what kind of institute it is and what kind of project they are doing they're about their professor and their ranking. So you should know and you must have an idea about that institute. So for that uh, institute, so according to the project they are running in their labs or what kind of the experiment they are doing, the professor in their lab. So you can generate your own research questions, right? And then, so while writing your SOP, you should mention one professor name and it makes your SOP stand out as compared to other applicants. So you must wrote the name of one particular professor to the program that you are applying, right? And this is a plus point. So, and the third thing in the institution information, you can put one line about the about the country. So, like for example, uh, if someone is applying for Japan, you can you can tell that Japan is uh, Japan is a kind of country which has a lot of international institute about the University of Tokyo or is University of Kyoto and some other university as well. So, you must write a line for the country. And then fourth one and the last one is your enthusiasm. And this is most important thing that you need to address in a very last. So this tell about how you can achieve your goal and why this program is important for you for achieving your goals. And then how you can relate that program with serving for the mankind because all kind of study and research or whatever the people are doing, the ultimate goal is to serve the mankind. So you should, you should have an idea and you should relate what kind of thing you have right in SOP with, with ultimate goal, with how you can serve for the mankind and how you can make this thing better for the other people as well. So your SOP should contain the four parts. The first part is your brief introduction. The second is your academic background. The third one is the institution information. And the fourth and last one is, is your enthusiasm. And now I am going to show you a one live example of how you can write your statement of purpose. So I just make an example here just to let you know people how you can and how your SOP should look like. So the first thing is you can see here, I highlighted this area and this area you can read from here as well. This is your introduction as I discussed in my previous slide. And uh, you can see here uh, that the person who, was, who is writing uh, his or her SOP is telling about him or herself and about the kind of motivation he or she has while writing or while applying for this scholarship or internship. The second thing is, I highlighted this area, is your academic background. So in this academic background, you need to tell about the what kind of relevant courses you have done and what kind of skill you have. And in this part, this part is most important part of your SOP. And in this part, you actually address some research question that you want to answer while studying at that institute if you are selected. And the third part of the SOP is about the institution and institution information. So in this part, you need to write the name of one particular professor uh, 
and the name of institute in which you are applying or you are interesting to applying and something about the country like for example if you are interested in a culture of some country you can also write the culture richness and scientific vibrancy like that and in the last part of the sop you should show your enthusiasm or your commitment with your research and how you can serve the humanity and uh, the scientific community in a last and uh, in a last part you can also write some line regarding that you are look forward to the kind of uh, possibility of joining this institute like i mentioned here particularly the oist community so you can write the sop in that way but while writing your sop you should need to consider all kind of thing that i have mentioned so far that your sop should shouldn't proceed with the criteria that that particular institute was mentioned so this is all about hope this will help you if you have any query regarding the statement of purpose you can write in a comment section and if you really like this video please give a thumbs up thank you so much for your listening thank you very much